might have put an end to a deadly shooting July 4th at a Fort Worth car wash before it could get even worse. Court documents for the arrest of 27-year-old Kennard Murphy outline how the shooting started and how it came to an end. Three people were killed, two young girls, as well as 42-year-old Terrell Wynn. Fox News' Amelia Jones spoke with Wynn's family, joins us with new details on the investigation. Amelia. Blake, those three victims were not involved in the initial fight. As you mentioned, those victims include two young girls and 42-year-old Terrell Wynn. I spoke to his sister today, who told me that the family is still in shock about what happened. Fort Worth police say this car wash off West Cleburne Road in Fort Worth is where a large 4th of July gathering ended in gunfire. According to court documents, 27-year-old Kennard Murphy went to this gathering to see his 11-month-old daughter. Witnesses told police due to prior domestic violence issues between Murphy and the baby's mother, there are relatives in her family who don't like him. Just before midnight, one of those relatives got in a fight with Murphy. At first, it appeared the two men were going to get in a fist fight. Then Murphy pulled out a rifle and started shooting at the other man, who was unarmed. Three people not involved in the fight were hit by gunfire. Like, life is so unfair. It's so unfair. And it'd be the innocent people that get hurt. Twyla Wynn's brother, 42-year-old Terrell Wynn, was one of the three people shot. He was hit in the leg and died from his injuries. Bullets also struck the back of a vehicle and hit two sisters in the back seat, one-year-old Winter Thuston and four-year-old Ivy Pierce. The children were taken to the hospital and later died. Hey, them babies didn't deserve it. My brother didn't deserve it. The documents go on to say an unknown person shot Murphy in the back, forcing him to drop the rifle. Then another person rushed over to grab it before Murphy could get to it and continue shooting. I just hate he was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Wynn couldn't confirm if her brother knew anyone at the large gathering. She believes he was there to use the car wash. Wynn says her brother moved to Texas from Louisiana about five years ago for a better life. He was going to celebrate his 43rd birthday in two weeks. His sister says that he also leaves behind a 21-year-old son. He's going to always hold a special place in my heart. When police spoke to Murphy, they said that he admitted to pointing the rifle at the relative of his baby's mother who he was fighting with, and he admitted to police, they say, that he tried to shoot him. Murphy is currently charged with capital murder of multiple persons. Fort Worth police say he's still in the hospital recovering from his injuries, so he hasn't been booked into jail yet. Blake, back to you. All right. Left of 24 hours ago. Everybody was coming out, cooking out in their front yard. Is a reminder of what is lost. Everything just went downhill from there. In the Eastland neighborhood of Fort Worth at Castleman and Comanche, Lizbeth was with her family celebrating the 4th of July. Like before everything uh, started, they were already here. Fort Worth police was already monitoring the area. They say two to three hundred people took over the block. I'm trying to show you all these people outside. Just before midnight. The booming sound of fireworks was muted by gunfire. What y'all doing? Half an hour before, Latasha Hyman was streaming live on Castleman Street. Family confirms the 39-year-old makeup artist and business owner was killed in the crossfire. It hurt her cousin, mm. Pastor Felton Jenkins. It's a different kind of pain. Spends every day fighting to stop gun violence, but this time. She is. We, she's, she's my angel. The pain is personal. Every time we see each other, it's a hug, it's a kiss, it's a smile, it's a small dance, you name it. We're going to treat each other up. She was loved by everybody. She was loved by everybody. Two more shooting victims survived, and police say another person died after a medical emergency. At this point, there are multiple suspects, but no one is in custody. They are cowards. Jenkins and several community leaders want those who know something to come forward. Come on forward. They want to stop gun violence. This is real. Stop these block parties. They want to protect the youth. To the point where you grow up with it, you kind of get used to it. Hearing gunshots on her street is nothing new for Lisbeth. I am so sorry. Like, my condolences go out to your family, your friends. But she is disheartened. Celebration turned to sorrow. In Fort Worth, I'm Tiffany Liu.
out of Chicago, Illinois, as you're taking a look at some video uh, from moments ago. This is the breaking news, and you can see that they are going to be holding a news conference. Two women killed, three young boys critically wounded in a mass shooting earlier this morning in the Grand Crossing neighborhood. The shooting happening around 6.15 in the morning. We do see someone at the podium. Let's listen in. Everyone, um, I'm Deputy Chief Don Jerome from Area 1. Uh, with me is uh, Deputy Mayor Gatewood from the Mayor's Office, Commander Branch from the 3rd District, uh, Commander Watson and Director Brooks. Also, victim services are on scene here for those involved, including the family and uh, area residents. So unfortunately, on this holiday morning, we find ourselves uh, at the scene of another tragedy. Uh, we're in the 7100 block of South Woodlawn, where about 6.15 a.m. this morning, officers responded and uh, were alerted to shots fired. They arrived, they found multiple people shot. Investigation reveals that includes a 42-year-old female, a 22-year-old female, three tender-aged children, which range from ages five, seven, and eight. Officers immediately rendered first aid, which included tourniquets, pressure bandages, and CPR. Investigation reveals that two vehicles pulled up into the area, multiple subjects exited those vehicles and fired at this residence. Multiple shell casings were recovered from both a rifle and a handgun at the scene. That investigation is ongoing. Area one detectives are on the scene and working with the officers here. It appears that this started from some type of personal dispute, but all this information is very preliminary at this time. Uh, anybody that has any, any information can contact the third district or they can contact area one detectives. Any questions? Now, neighbors were saying that they saw some of these suspects. Deadly at the Fashion Island Mall in Newport Beach. Good evening, I'm Sarah Calvin. And I'm Sandra Mitchell. Micah has the night off. Police say a woman and her husband were walking in front of the Barnes & Noble bookstore. That's when a pair of thieves tried to rob them. And that's when a struggle ensued and the victim was dragged into the parking lot where she was then run over by the getaway driver. Chris Wolf is live in Newport Beach with the heartbreaking details. Chris? Yeah, Cher and Sandy, what a story this is. The community is outraged at this deadly violence at a popular shopping mall. In the middle of the day, officials have finally cleared the crime scene and removed the body. You gonna call me okay, TLA? Oh, <laughs> Police cuff and haul off suspects in a deadly botched robbery in Newport Beach Tuesday afternoon. The violence left a 69-year-old woman dead after the getaway car slammed into her at the popular upscale Fashion Island shopping center. You know, frankly, to hell with these guys. They knew exactly what they were doing when they decided to come into our, our city to commit crime, and a woman's dead because of it. Investigators say the woman and her husband were standing near the Barnes & Noble bookstore when two young men approached, attempting to rob them. A struggle followed. Then the getaway driver pulled up in a white Toyota Camry. One of the attackers tried to jump in, but turned and ran off and started firing a gun. No one was hurt. The other one got in the car. Uh, the suspect vehicle drove away, striking the female. And tragically, and unfortunately, she was deceased uh, there in the roadway. Officers say the two men in the getaway car eventually picked up their accomplice who'd been firing a gun, and the trio headed north towards L.A. County. A food delivery service driver was pulling up to the crime scene and spotted a good Samaritan trying to perform CPR on the female victim. He had no idea he was witnessing the result of extreme violence. I thought someone collapsed, and some because someone was giving CPR, so... Yeah, normally like someone having a heart attack or something. What were the criminals after? Did they have jewelry? Did they have shopping bags? What were they trying to rob them of? It's a great question, and, and all that will come out in the investigation. I don't have that information at this time. 
Newport Beach patrol officers were able to locate the getaway car almost immediately, leading to a high-speed chase that eventually ended in Southgate, with the suspects ditching the car and taking off on foot. All three are in custody. The Newport Beach mayor is thanking the Newport Beach police and all of the surrounding law enforcement agencies for the quick action and the quick capture of these suspects. Investigators tell me the husband was not physically injured, but emotionally, well, that's a different story. Report we'll see you then. Tonight, one woman is dead and three others hurt after a shootout between neighbors on Indies near Northwest Side. Fox 59's Jesse Wells spoke to some of those neighbors and explains what they claim led to the violence. Cell phone video shown to me by a neighbor clearly shows the man who lives in this home standing at his front door and firing the first shot into a crowd of people next door. Those victims then return fire, leading to a shootout that left one woman dead. Just before 9.30 Thursday night, a 4th of July celebration led to a dispute between neighbors that erupted into gunfire. I'm frustrated because this could have been avoided. Like, right? this didn't have to happen. That woman asked not to be identified. A police report shows she called officers to the scene more than an hour before the shooting and claimed her neighbor threatened her family with a gun because they were setting off fireworks. He said, if you keep lighting those fireworks, I'm going to shoot something over there. That's what he said. After police left, video shows the suspect shoot into a crowd of neighbors who shot back, shattering the glass on the suspect's front door. The suspect then went inside and allegedly continued to shoot out the side window as his neighbors returned fire. 48-year-old Heather Walters, who was inside the suspect's home, was killed in that crossfire. I mean, what do you think is going to occur on July 4th? People are going to use fireworks. That is no reason to get into disturbance and end up shooting at your neighbors. It's senseless. It makes no logical sense. It's frustrating, it's sad, and it's sick altogether because it could have been avoided a long time ago. That woman's two sons were shot in the face and leg but survived. Police reports confirm she called police multiple times in recent months to report issues with the same neighbor. I have numerous amount of reports and calls on him for basically the same thing. They come out and they do nothing. The neighbor who fired the first shot was hospitalized and faces possible criminal charges. So far, no other arrests have been made. Finally, the case does remain an active investigation. Anyone with additional information to share can contact either IMP's homicide office or Crime Stoppers. Jesse Wells, Fox 59 News. Jesse. With new surveillance video capturing the moment an alleged drunk driver crashed right through a nail salon on Long Island. Four people were killed. The suspect appeared before a judge for the first time just hours ago. Good afternoon to you. I'm Liz Chow. I'm Sandra Bookman, and today for David, Stephen Schwally was released from the hospital this morning ahead of his court appearance. He was held on $1 million cash bail after telling police he had 18 beers the night before the crash. Prosecutors described him speeding in a parking lot and swerving before the crash on Friday. Meanwhile, we're learning much more about the victims. Long Island reporter Shantae lands live outside the courthouse in Central Islip with the very latest. Shantae? Sandra and Liz, 64-year-old Stephen Swally appeared here at this courthouse for his arraignment. NYPD officers, including what appeared to be the widow of that officer killed, along with relatives of the other victims, also wanted to see this man in person. The faces of the owner, two employees, and a customer, an NYPD officer, all killed inside Hawaii Nail and Spa in Deer Park after an alleged drunk driver, 64-year-old Stephen Swally of Dix Hills, barreled through the salon with his minivan. Video of the deadly crash released by the nail salon on its Instagram page. I hope this is the nightmare when I wake up and it is, you know, everything is not real. <laughs> Today, the family of the nail salon owner, Jian Kai Chen, affectionately known by customers as Ken, speaking out. We just had the uh, Father's Day celebration party. You know, not long ago, we we both singing and 
Jane together. We record a video and then we have such a happy family. <laughs> now it's all Chris. <laughs> The 37-year-old leaves behind his wife, who was also hit, now in ICU, and there are two young kids, two employees, Yan Shu, known as Jenny, and Mei Chi Zhang, and NYPD officer 30-year-old Amelia Renhack was off-duty getting her nails done for a wedding. The newlywed worked with her husband, a detective, at the 102nd Precinct in Queens. A community memorial continues to grow outside of the now boarded up salon. So all family want to hold the attacker fully accountable. And Stephen Schwally, who is a Marine veteran, was held on a million dollars cash bail, as you mentioned. He lived in Suffolk County for 50 years, according to attorneys, but he's currently homeless. Now, as far as that NYPD officer, her funeral is scheduled for this Saturday, right here on Long Island in New Hyde Park. Live in Central Islip, Shantae Lands, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Oh, praises to you, by Shem Yahusha. So, you know, as we saw in the videos that, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, things taking place on the earth, man, you know. And it's sad to see, you know, some of these kids are, you know, getting judged by the most high Yahweh by Shem Yahusha. But, <clears throat> you know, through this truth, we understand, you know, uh, the will of the Most High, you know, and we understand His judgment, you know, uh, according to the Scriptures and it's truth, you know. So, uh, you know, in this time we live in, and you know, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of darkness out here, and you know, you got, you know, the brothers are teaching the truth and, and spreading this truth, you know, uh, and you know, people just not taking heed to it, you know. And, and and you know when 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 the, when the things take you know bad things happen then you know they want to scream out and call the Lord call on the Lord you know but you know according to the scriptures you know uh, especially his people you know they don't know his ways or his judgments you know and, and uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter five and. Uh, uh, this five and twenty.